Hey guys, it's Sequence Don again, and welcome back to my channel. So, first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be continuing the fundamentals of the Unity editor. We're going to be looking at how we can actually detect collisions in Unity. We did collision detection last time, but this time we're going to be focusing on scripting. And when do we detect a collision that is a trigger collision and a non trigger collision? So, let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we need to do to start capturing collisions in Unity with scripts. And for some of you who have been watching this series, you haven't seen the scripts editor before, then, you know, make sure that you look at the Unity C Sharp fundamentals videos that I have. I'm going to be putting that in the description of this video. On this video, I'm going to focus on collisions itself. We're going to be coding as well, but that video about C Sharp development goes into a lot of depth into actual coding in C Sharp for Unity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be adding a couple of scripts that are going to allow us to detect collisions. And if you remember this scene when I hit play, everything falls into, you know, towards the floor and we have basically spheres falling over and moving around and we set mass, a mass, a higher mass for some of them. So Let's go in and what I want to do in this video is I want to add collision detection for this ground and anything that falls down and hits it, I want to display the name. So let's go in and, and look at that and how that's going to work. The other thing that I also want to do is I want to show you how we can detect trigger collisions. So if I were to enable this trigger on the ground, you're going to see what's going to happen. And that's what it's what that's what I mean when I say trigger collisions is is basically something that triggers a collision but it doesn't actually block the collision meaning that if this ball is falling down it's going to it's basically going to go through the ground it's not going to be stopped by the collider but it's still going to be detecting the collision that is generated by the sphere colliding with the ground so if I hit play right now you're going to see that everything is going to start going through it and by making it trigger, the collider still works, but things are going to go through it, and I can still I can still detect collisions. The reason why we do those things is because in games, we need that a lot. We might not need to collide with an object, but we might need to know if a certain car character is close to us, or if we are crossing a line, or if two objects are close to each other. So there's a lot of different use cases that you'll need that for. Okay, so before we do the collision detection, I want to go back to the ground and uncheck the East trigger. We'll do a detection on trigger after we go through the regular collision. So I'm just going to uncheck that. And the next thing that I want you to do is just click on Add Component. And we're going to create a new script. And this script is going to be called Collision Detector. And then just hit Enter. And what's going to happen is you're going to be adding, it's adding a, a script to this component, which is going to be a mono, what it's called from mono behavior, and I'll show you what that is. The other thing that I want to do is I want to go into assets, right click on assets and create a new folder. And we're going to call it scripts. And all of our scripts are going to go into that folder, and that's a very common practice to do is to put scripts in that folder. Then I'm going to grab the collision detector script that we created and I'm going to drag it and drop it into that folder. So now let's go back into our ground and make sure that our script is still attached and looks like it's still attached. In previous versions of Unity you couldn't do that and, and I'm really excited that you can do that now. It, it, it basically knows where you move it to and it doesn't lose the, collection, the connection. So what I'm going to do now is double click on it to open it up. And I'll show you what they see. So this is what's called a game object, a script that inherits from mono behavior. The every script that you create in Unity in and basically that you attach to a game a game object is gonna always inherit from mono behavior. And and I'm gonna go into more details about the life cycle of the game in, in Unity, which is really, really important for you to know. But for now just know that there is something called a mono behavior and the script that we're creating inherits from that. If you want to know, like I said before, more details about C Sharp and Unity scripting, go in, go ahead and find the link in the description of this video where I go more in depth into coding with Unity. So, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I, I really don't need the start and update method, so I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to hit save. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type on, and then we're going to type on collision. So 
you can see that we have multiple methods available for us. We have on collision enter. We also have on collision enter 2D. We have on collision exit. So what I'm going to add just to show you how this works is we're going to add the on collision enter. We're not using the 2D components and the 2D collider, so we wouldn't use the 2D to the 2D one. So let's just select the first one. Excellent. And, and now what we have in here, we have an argument that is called collision. Other, so what's going to happen is whatever's colliding with this game object, which in our case is the, is the ground, which is this piece right here, it's going to be, so let's say that the sphere was colliding with this object. So what's going to happen is the sphere is going to get passed into the argument as the collision object. And, and now we have control of everything about that game object. So, so what I can do here is we can say, okay, debug.log for now. And we're going to say other, and then we can just say game object. So this is going to tell me that I'm colliding with something, right? Other means the object is colliding with the ground. Game object means the actual object of that other collision co contact that I'm, that I'm colliding with. So if I'm colliding with the sphere, the game object, I'm going to get the game object of the sphere. If I'm colliding with the, you know, with the cube, the other, it's going to be the cube, and the game object is going to be the game object of the cube. So this is really powerful, and, and collision detection in Unity is really, really powerful. So the other thing that I can do is I can say, okay, I want to know the name of the other object that I'm colliding with. And let me just clean this up. Perfect. So this is going to be on collision enter. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add just another debug line on the very top there. And we can say, we can just copy the name of that method. And we can say that we're entering the on collision enter. So by looking at the method name, we know that, that is basically the enter of the collision. So let's go back into Unity and we can, we can see and find out how this works. So the other thing that I can do is I'm going to bring in the console. So let me let me resize this so that we can see. So anything that I do with the bug.log is going to print in the console. So whenever you're making games and you want to know, you know, you're troubleshooting or you want to get additional information on what's happening in your scripts, make sure that you use the bug.log. Excellent. So now let's just hit play and see what happens. So we're getting a lot of different entries, which is really awesome. So you can see that you know the, fir the first one that we entered was the xphere underscore four. And the reason for that is because that one is closer to the ground. Then we also got more spheres four. And the reason for that is because it's, it's detecting that you know multiple times. Then if I go to this one, this one is a sphere underscore three. So that was the next one that hit the ground. Then we got a sphere underscore one, two, then we have the capsule, the cylinder. So, so these guys detecting everything that is entering. And also, just to reiterate why sphere underscore four was hit multiple times is because this one is bouncing. So if it bounces down, that's going to enter once. And as soon as it goes up, it's going to exit it. And then it's going to enter one more time. So if I have a bigger bounce on that and it was bouncing five times, I'm going to be detecting that collision multiple times because it's entering the collision detection, the collision detection multiple times. So I'm gonna undo that and perfect. So we have we have that information. So let's go ahead back and, and go back to the script and I'm gonna do another method and this one is gonna be on collision exit. And I'm gonna copy the exact same lines that we did in here. This one it's gonna I'm gonna re basically rename the method to be exit on the debug.log. And the other thing that I'm going to do is, for now, let's disable every other game object except the sphere because we're going to get a lot of, a lot of entries. And I want to, I want to basically show you how this works. And you know, I need you to understand it really well because this is one of the core features of, you know, making a game. Collision detection is very important. So I'm going to disable everything and except the sphere underscore one. And we have that there. So now let's go in and and hit play one more time and focus on the console. So that's entering, 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 entering. And you can see that we're exiting as well. And that's because we we added. So the first time around, we enter the, we basically enter and hit the ground. Then we exit that collision, which was the sphere one. And, and then we enter it one more time. Then we exit it. And then we enter it one more time. We exit it again. And then we enter it. And then we never exit because it's actually, you know, it's actually on the ground. So looks like that stuff is working great. 
So if you need to detect, you know, when you're entering a collision, that's when you'll use the uncollision enter. If you want to detect when you're exiting a collision, then you use the uncollision exit. So what happened if you wanted to, you know, do something while the collision is happening? So you there's another method called uncollision stay. And that one is really helpful if you want to know, let's say that I'm walking through a surface. So this was a character, right? And this character was walking through the surface. And I want to know that the character is, you know, is, is touching, it's on the floor, it's actually walking. So you can use, you know, on collision stay for that. So if the character was walking or even if the ball was rolling and you want to know that the ball is rolling and, he, and, and then it falls. So when it falls, you know that the collision it's you know it's exiting so that ball is not rolling anymore it's actually in the air so that, that's when you can do you know changes of state you know that the collision was rolling now the collision is on the air it's falling so that allows you to get that data and change your state so in this in this scenario we can say something like we can rename i'm going to copy the exact same information and then rename or you know or debug that log from being exit to uh, on collision stay. And let's go into our console again. And I'm, out, I'm also going to clear the log. So let's hit play one more time. And you're going to see that we're still getting the same information. And also we're getting the on collision stay method getting executed. Perfect. So that's all working. I'm going to hit play again. So, so now that we went through and look at on collision enter, on collision stay, and on collision exit how could we can actually look at the trigger method so i told you in the beginning that we could set this collider to be a trigger collider and if i hit you know enable it and i hit play the sphere is going to go through the ground and you can see that i'm not getting any collision detection in that the reason for that is because i'm using the methods that have to do with collisions when the co when the trigger is not enabled so if I want to do on trigger collisions, meaning that I want to detect when this sphere is going through the ground, then I have to use different methods. So let's go back into script. And what I'm going to do now is, is actually copy all these three. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to make those changes. So on this one, we're using on collision enter. So what we're going to be using here is on trigger enter. On trigger enter. We're also going to use on trigger stay. And we're also going to use on collision on trigger exit. And we're also going to rename what we did here. So this is going to be on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. Perfect. The other thing that we can do here to make this more readable, we can say region trigger type collisions. And I'm going to surround this by doing a region as well. Excellent. And I'm going to do the same thing with the one above it. So we have these two things separated and it's easier to find it. This is gonna be non-trigger type collisions. And we're gonna do our end region. What regions allow you to do is to separate your code. So it's, it basically adds a, a little bar here so that I can collapse and expand. So then I don't have to look at all the code to be able to find certain things. I can say, okay, I want to look at trigger type collisions and you expand that and I can focus on that piece. So I didn't want to get you confused with this area. I don't, I just want to focus on this area now. So now let's go back in. And there's another thing that we need to do here the, before we keep going, because this is, I don't think this is going to work. And if I type in on, on, on trigger, you're going to see that this now takes a collider and not a collision. So that's going to be a different object. So this needs to be a collider. So just keep in mind that when you're doing trigger collisions, you have to use the collider. When you're using on collision type events, you have to use the collision. And the collider is also going to have another, which is going to be the object that gets passed in, and it's also going to have the game object and so on. So I think that's all we need to do. Let's go back into Unity and then hit play and see what happens. And looks like we're detecting collisions now, but these collisions are trigger type collisions and that's why they're now getting executed. You can see that we did get the on, on, trigger, on trigger enter, on trigger stay, on trigger stay because that's actually going through it. And this ground is has, has some thickness. So as the sphere is going through it, it's detecting you know, collisions 
as, as it's getting through and then when it goes out it's detecting that we're getting out of the trigger so on trigger exit it's going to get executed when the sphere is going through the ground and looks at all of that is working so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video let me do one more thing before we wrap it up and that is I'm going to enable everything here and you're going to see that now we're going to get a lot more messages in our console because we're colliding with a lot of, a lot of different objects and we're going to get more here in a minute there we go the quad is colliding and it's probably done so yeah we should be done by now but you can see that we're detecting collisions for everything that is going through that and that's really helpful when it comes to games because you know i might want to change the color of the ground if you know let's say that the cube was going through it or i might want to know you know maybe i will display something in the ui if this guy is going through it so there's a lot of different use cases that you know you'll use to you know when you're dealing with collisions so that's everything I wanted to basically tell you and show you in this video. If you guys have any questions about, you know, detecting collisions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Thank you, guys.